today I'm gonna be putting in some more work on the 240. Super stoked to get back to work on this thing. I wanted to start this video off by lowering the rear and sorting out my camber, but I got into it and it turns out that the rear coilovers are maxed out, won't go any lower. And the rear upper control arm is also seized. I went ahead and ordered some rear upper control arms, but getting new coilovers is gonna have to wait a little bit longer. It's just not in the budget right now. So I finally got an intake on the on the 240 and I'm in the process of restoring my door panels and I kind of want to show you guys how I'm going about this. These door panels are known for being very fragile and cracking. I'll go ahead and show you this untouched one first. As you can see, there's a whole segment that's missing here. There's cracks. You can see this is cracked. There's a crack along here. There's a crack along here. Basically, these door panels are very brittle and they just fall apart. There's, you know, this area is cracked and this mount is actually starting to get a little loose. So this door was actually pretty bad, a lot worse than the passenger side. There was a lot more pieces missing and a lot more cracks, but it's kind of hard to like really show on camera, but this thing is solid. So for like $100 in materials, I figured I would give this a shot and see how it works. And I think it's gonna work pretty well. Another common issue with these is that they're so brittle that the mounting points break completely. It gets really brittle around these mounting areas, of course, and it just cracks and falls apart and then the door doesn't mount very well. So what's basically gonna happen here is this is gonna get filled in with epoxy. It'll be solid. I'll have to redrill the holes, but the mounting points should never break again. The mounting points are already done on this one, uh, except for this one. This one still needs to be done, but you can, you can see they're very rigid. Like there's no chance this mounting point is gonna break at all. I mean, this whole thing is very rigid. It's not gonna it's not gonna crack this is what it'll look like when it's finished so let's go ahead and get started on this one I'm gonna pull this foam off and I'm gonna start cutting out fiberglass to lay over these cracked areas first coat is gonna go down with the fiberglass patches so I went ahead and got all my fiberglass cut out this should just about cover everything So I got the first coat of epoxy and fiberglass on. Give it a few hours, let it cure. And on the other door panel, I filled in the last spot. Once this epoxy cures, this door panel will be finished and ready to install. This one still needs one more coat. So I'm gonna do two coats on this thing. That way it's just extra rigid. All right guys, so it is the next day and the epoxy set up really nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my second coat on and fill in these mounting holes a little bit more and uh, let it sit again for another night and we'll be good to go. The other door panel is pretty much finished. All I really had to do on this one was finish up this one last mounting point. I already sprayed it. So uh, I'm waiting for this paint to dry. Once that paint dries, I'll be able to go ahead and install that door panel. So I'll at least have one installed tonight. And then, uh, then I'll probably mess around with some other stuff while this epoxy sets up on the passenger door panel. I've already got the resin mixed up, so I kind of got to act fast. I got to go ahead and get my second coat on, and we'll go from there. All right, so I got the second coat of epoxy laid down. Got the mounting points all filled up. This is going to take uh, quite a few hours to set up again, so I'm going to let that sit overnight. While that waits, this door panel is pretty much ready to go. I just got to give this cloth a quick clean and we should be good to throw it on in. So I'm pretty hyped to get this thing in the car and uh, see exactly how rigid it is once it's all mounted up. It's going to end up coming off again later, but I want to go ahead and get my holes drilled, get the door panel mounted. I'll be taking it off again to sort out the speakers and stuff later on. So I 
got the door panel installed. I know it's going to be really hard to show you on camera, but this thing is solid as a rock. Um, you know, I don't know. I can't really do much more other than that to kind of show you guys exactly how stout this thing is, but I can guarantee you it feels solid and it's not going anywhere. So I can pull on it. There's no flexing. There's no cracking. There's no weird bending. I can lean up against it and it's fine. Cool stuff, cool stuff. So I'm pretty excited about how this door panel turned out. Pretty happy with it. I need to start working on the rest of this wiring. So I gotta start pulling through some sensor wires, getting my gauges wired up, and uh, let's see how far we can get on this thing. All right, so fast forward a little bit, and I got the passenger side door panel finished up and installed. One last thing I wanna clarify about the work I did on these door panels. This was just sort of an experiment to see how it would work, and I think, uh, I think it turned out really well. Just to put things into perspective, these door panels were absolutely totaled before. I couldn't mount them or anything, so now the fact that they're mounted on solid means that I think it was a pretty good success. So yeah, that's all I really wanted to say about that. Door panels are done, time to move on to the next thing. As you can probably tell from this big mess, I already got a start on my uh, wiring for the gauges. I got all my sensor wires pulled through, and I also made this uh, this gauge pod just as like a temporary solution to keep my stuff mounted for now. It fits right here. And it's not perfect, but it'll work temporarily. You know, this, this trim actually fits over it. Yeah, this actually doesn't look too bad. I think I'll let this ride for a little bit until I figure something else out. I think I have some plans for something else I want to try with my gauges later on. But for now, this is definitely a good temporary solution. So the last thing I want to do for the night is going to be actually getting power to these gauges. Uh, before, in the past, you know, people just have tapped into the radio harness for power. And I honestly, I want to get rid of that tap and repair that wiring. And I'm going to be powering my gauges from a fuse tap off of the fuse block down here and I'll be running a wire from that adder fuse up to my gauges and they will be on a 5 amp fuse and and it'll be a little bit cleaner than just tapping into my radio harness so that's the last thing I'm probably gonna do for the night is get power to these gauges so I can see them light up so just to clarify here I'm gonna be using this fuse tap to power my fuses Basically, this goes in the place of one of the fuses on the fuse block under there, and uh, it allows me to basically add a fuse to the existing fuse and get another circuit in place. Usually, I'd be using one of these as a signal for a relay and then getting power directly from the battery, but since the gauges draw such little amperage, I'm going to actually be using this to just straight up power the gauges. So yeah, all I needed to do was break out my multimeter find a fuse that only has power when the key is in the on position and uh, go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and slip this in and then run a wire over to the middle of the center console and start wiring up all the power for the gauges. All right guys, so a little while later, uh, the wiring still looks kind of like a mess, but I got everything sorted out for the most part. I should have power to all these gauges. There's still a few sensors that I need to wire up and of course I need to finish tucking all this, but for now, I'm still in the testing phase. So when I turn this key, I should get power to all three gauges. So it looks like I've got power to my boost gauge and my air fuel gauge, but I'm not getting power to, to my uh, oil and water temp gauge. I'll have to double check my wiring, but I'm pretty sure this thing is burnt out, which is really unfortunate. It's a powered by max uh, gauge, and I really did like it, but uh, it would appear that it's done for, so I may have to contact them and try to get another gauge, but I know I already said that this is a temporary solution, but it honestly doesn't look that bad. I think it'll, uh, I think it'll be fine like this for a while. So. Anyways, guys, as much as I'd love to keep on wiring and finish this thing up tonight, I'm, it's just super late and I'm exhausted. So one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about before I got off is that I'm going to be making some changes on this channel. I'm going to start a weekly schedule for my uploads. So from now on, you can expect to see my videos every Monday at around 12.30. So yeah, now you guys know when my videos are coming out. So stay tuned for more content. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.